Welcome, William here, just having a little bit of refreshment before we crack on with this next unit. So let's see what this unit is. This unit is Unit 6, Controlling Project Progress Against Agreed Quality Standards in the Workplace. Now, this unit has been giving, uh, allocated or given a length of 10 credits. So it's quite a large unit. But it's been broken down into small uh, learning outcomes, nine in total. So what is a learning outcome? A learning outcome is anything that you should know or be able to do as a matter of uh, a learning process or with an assessment process, uh, something that you can give evidence to, to prove that you know what you're doing, how you do it and when you do it, etc. So, Unit Overview, let's see what this unit's all about. The title is Controlling Project Progress Against Agreed Quality Standards in the Workplace. In poor construction, quality is second priority to progress. Everybody wants to know when the job starts and when the job finishes because it costs extra money should you run over. But Quality um, should become first prior to progress. Not to do so is a false economy. Doing it right first time to the correct standard is the most cost and effective way of building. This is building the fast track way. And the fast track way is to plan quality assurance into the program. Have you got that? That is key planning quality assurance into the program. So to be able to do that you know you have to know what are the quality standards and how and when to communicate and apply them is also essential. As is allocating quality assurance responsibilities to the right person and setting up quality assurance records and systems. Furthermore, it is essential, particularly at planning, to proactively research all aspects of the project to highlight any possible quality assurance conflicts. It may be in design, it may be in construction method. And in consultation with stakeholders, a good site manager will overcome these conflicts ahead of programme, so that Design delays are avoided and as, as stated, a good site manager will normally do this at planning or during site, up, site setup by reviewing building plans, surveys, trade packages, method statements so that he can identify any quality assurance conflicts and overcome them in good time. As the MVQ candidate, it is your task, with the assistance of your MVQ assessor and our guidance, to find the evidence for all of the aforementioned to meet the MVQ standards as they are recorded in the unit learning outcomes. So let's see what those learning outcomes are. Well, before I do that, the Product evidences that I suggest are just suggestions. They are there to lead you on the right track. Um, your company might use different systems, but you can get an overview from the types of evidence that I am suggesting. So what are the learning outcomes for this unit? Number one, identify and interpret quality standards from available information and pass them to people responsible for the implementation before they start work. Types of product evidence for this, build regulations, NHBC recommendations, product trade, best practice codes, method statement briefings, subcontractor pre-start meeting minutes. The second learning outcome. Specify clearly and unambiguously the responsibilities which individuals have for maintaining quality standards. And the product evidences I'm suggesting here could be 
a quality assurance trade plan. Health and safety meeting minutes, because the health and safety meeting minutes, they in of themselves are a quality plan for health and safety. Site meeting minutes, subcontractor meeting minutes or contracts. The third learning outcome, set up systems to inspect and control the quality of the work. Product information that you could use here are quality assurance plans, snagging sheets, section inspections and sign off procedures and documents and trade sign off procedures. The fourth learning outcome, regularly check that work conforms to the design requirements and the specified quality standards. This could be a drawing that's got areas signed and checked off, build regulations, NHBC check sheets, stroke recommendations, product and trade best practice codes, method statements, commissioning certificates or survey reports. Number five, identify work which fails to meet requirements and specify quality standards and implement corrective action. This could be snagging sheets or non-conforming notices, or it could be even site meeting minutes. Number six, inform decision makers about significant variations of quality standards and recommend solutions they need to make and actions they need to take. Again, site meeting minutes, project meeting minutes, non-conforming notices. Number six, Identify conflicts between quality standards and refer them to decision makers for resolution. Survey reports, emails, site manager correspondence. Number eight, identify improvements from feedback. Now feedback is the key here, received and recommend them to decision makers. When you send off requests for information, you will get feedback. You may get feedback when you are completing or briefing method statements to trades, they might say actually we want to do it a different way. So these are the kind of evidences that are required in this section. And finally, agree amendments to project quality standards and record them accurately. Here we could have project instructions, revised method statements, even an INM manual and site meeting minutes. Remember, each learning outcome only requires one or two pieces of evidence. Plan the evidence that you're going to use and choose wisely so that you can use the one piece of evidence in many of the learning outcomes. I trust this has been helpful. Take your time. Give yourself and your studies the time they deserve.